<laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the best Family Guy episodes of each season. Now I hope I die next. For this list, we'll be looking back at the past 20 seasons of Seth MacFarlane's satirical animated sitcom and examining the episodes we believe are the true highlights of their year. We'll be discussing some of these episodes in detail, so a spoiler alert is now in effect. What season of Family Guy is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. Season 1 – Death Has a Shadow Although Family Guy's inaugural season went through your typical sitcom growing pains, the series pilot episode nevertheless gave us a great first impression of Quahog. Hey, who wants to play Drink the Beer? Right here. <laughs> you win! Alright, what do I win? Another beer! In the first demonstration of his drunken buffoonery, Peter goes on welfare after falling asleep at his factory job and being fired. When he accidentally receives more money than he was supposed to, he, as expected, blows it all as quickly as possible. Lois, I know what I did was wrong, but I only did it for you and the kids. Except for the jukebox in the bathroom. That was a gift for Peter. In addition to the Griffin family, the pilot introduces viewers to characters who'd become staples of the show, like Quagmire, Cleveland, and even the Kool-Aid Man. Oh yeah! It's also a testing ground for some of the series' most popular gags, namely Stewie's determination to kill Lois and, of course, McFarlane's propensity for cutaways. Dick, you ever wonder what's outside those walls? Say now, that's dangerous thinking, Paul. You best stick to your work. <laughs> okay. Season 2 – Da Boom Season 2 has plenty of classics, such as Brian and Stewie's very first Road 2 episode. We're off on the road to Rhode Island. But Da Boom set the bar high with its next-level comedic timing. Airing less than a week before the new millennium began, this episode hilariously captures the paranoia of Y2K by placing the Griffins in the midst of an apocalypse. Good morning, family. Hey, Lois, you remember when I was the third hardy boy? Peter, there was no third hardy boy. Oh, really? Just like there was no apocalypse, he shoots, he scores! Ever the optimist, Peter rallies his town's survivors into starting anew, but makes a big error in judgment by naming himself mayor for life. Sure, the commentary's dated, but questionable leadership is a topic that's transcended the series. On top of that, it has one of the funniest endings of any episode, and kicked off Peter's feud with Ernie the Giant Chicken with a bang. Literally. I'm sorry, this is expired. You son of a- <laughs> Season 3 – The Thin White Line if misuse of power was but a minor aspect of Da Boom, it's the primary focus of the thin white line. So take it from me, McGriffin the drug dog. If you really want to get high, it's as easy as being yourself. This season premiere wouldn't be the last time Family Guy addressed controversial issues head on in its third outing, as this season also saw the show tackle Southern conservatism in To Love and Die in Dixie. But when Brian begins to work with Joe as a detection dog for the police, it becomes one of the show's more serious episodes after the Griffin's anthropomorphic pet spirals into substance use. It's really hard for me to talk about my feelings, but... W why don't we start with someone more interesting, Peter? Brian, being more rational in early seasons, decides to get clean. But his struggle is a bittersweet reminder that even the most well-intentioned of us can have all too real problems. If I've learned anything from my experience, it's that we're all responsible for our own destiny. Season 4 – PTV By the mid-2000s, McFarland and his cohorts were no strangers to controversy for pushing the envelope of what a sitcom could portray. But rather than tone things down, they rebelled in full force with one big jab at censorship laws. What the hell? Why are they blocking out all the good stuff? It's the D Van D Show, starring D Van D in one of his wildest schemes, Peter starts his own TV network after the FCC goes too far with their censorship. Like most of his ideas, PTV ends up backfiring, but not before becoming a huge hit due to its racy and uncut material. You can tell just how much fun this episode was to create, as it's arguably the most self-aware the show has ever gotten. 
and it proves that all you need to expose an unbeatable system is a show-stopping musical number. Mr. Griffin, that was terrific. Season 5, Meet the Quagmires. Time travel has become an essential element of Brian and Stewie's adventures, but the season 5 finale sees Peter learning the ins and outs of the concept instead. After death gives him a chance to be young and single for one more night, Peter blows off a date with Lois and unwittingly jeopardizes their relationship. Lois, we got the rest of our lives for me to not hear a word you just said, but tonight I got plans with Cleveland. Back in the present, Lois is now married to Quagmire and the Griffin kids are the spitting image of their father. <laughs> <laughs> Viewers were already aware of how much Peter inconveniences those around him, but seeing a future significantly better off without him leads to some surprising character development for the Griffin patriarch. It all adds up to a heartwarming conclusion when he vows to change and wins Lois back McFly style. Hey, Quagmire! Huh? Just a fool, a fool in love with Sorry, Lois, but I have to do this. Season 6. Stewie kills Lois, and Lois kills Stewie. Family Guy's sixth season had another all-timer in Blue Harvest, the perfect launch point for the show's endlessly clever Star Wars parody trilogy. But this double feature is required viewing for longtime fans, as we're treated to a story several seasons in the making. Who cares? You're not going to kill her anyway. You're going to bitch and moan, and then you're going to do what you always do. The minute Lois walks through that door, you're going to forget all about it, beg for your apple juice, go poop, and fall asleep. When his parents go on vacation without him, Stewie has finally had enough and seemingly takes Lois out. Framing Peter for her death, his subsequent plan to become a tyrannical overlord is thwarted when Lois resurfaces and plots revenge. Stewie, your reign of terror has come to an end. That the entire ordeal turns out to be a simulation is completely besides the point. This mother-son relationship is unlike any other, and to see it reach such an explosive crescendo makes for one of the show's most oddly fulfilling moments. Season 7, I Dream of Jesus. Oh. Have you not heard? When it comes to this episode, it was our understanding that everyone had heard. It's a needle drop for the ages when Peter rediscovers his favorite song, Surfin' Bird, birthing one of the show's most unpredictable running gags. From then on, we never quite knew if and when he would break into that annoyingly catchy song. But this episode is equally memorable for its other plot thread, in which Peter meets Jesus Christ and turns him into an overnight celebrity. Hey, well, Jesus, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jay. Glad to be here. So, Jesus, so what have you been doing since you've been back? We can't imagine this episode went over too well with religious viewers, but commentary about the price of fame, some hysterical impressions, and a brilliant callback to Office Space all work together to make this episode an Emmy contender. Jesus Christ, look at you. You had it all. Money, fame, eternal life. Season 8, Road to the Multiverse. Whether it's Peter's quest to find the source of dirty jokes or a retelling of The Empire Strikes Back, Season 8 certainly takes the Griffins on many exciting adventures. But of all these journeys, Brian and Stewie's trek through the multiverse represents some of Family Guy's strongest and most imaginative storytelling. We all know Quahog was strange, but it's comparatively normal next to the alternate versions the two travel to. It's a wonderful day for pie. The Disney universe, the universe where dogs rule, the one where everyone has two heads, it's also magical. Combining various animation styles with irresistible pop culture references, this episode dares you to take your eyes off it. It's not only the high point of its season, but one of the show's absolute best. Yep, with no Christianity to inspire Michelangelo, they gave the job to John Hinckley. Season 9. And then there were fewer. This two-part premiere is a personal favorite of the McFarlands. And it's just as thrilling to watch even when you know how it ends. Good evening, everyone. James Woods? When the residents of Quahog are invited to a soiree by James Woods, the bad blood between the actor and his guest turns red when the group is picked off one by one. Family Guy was destined to send up the whodunit genre at some point, but by replacing cutaways with startling twists, 
what unfolds is also a genuinely compelling mystery in its own right. The large pool of suspects gives each of the eclectic side characters a chance to shine, while the episode upends the series' continuity by ensuring that those who die stay that way. Agatha Christie would have been proud. Very clever, Lois. You shouldn't have stopped to say hi to me. You would have lived longer. God, why do I ever try to be friends with other women? Season 10. Back to the pilot. There's no better way to celebrate a milestone like 10 seasons than going back to where it all began. Well, here we are. That's odd. It's our house, but somehow it looks a little different. When Brian and Stewie travel back in time to the events of Family Guy's first episode, no expense is spared as the episode makes fun of just how much the show has evolved. The rough animation, outdated cultural references, and Meg's voice are all up for grabs as the writers go full meta. But this episode, more than others, highlights the true dangers posed by altering the past, as Brian's tampering with world events spells disaster for the present, sending them back again. And when other versions of the duo arrive to stop them, you know hilarity is sure to follow. Season 11, Yug Elamaf. Sometimes you have to wonder what it's going to take for Brian to stop messing with time. Why do you keep a sleeping baby in your time machine room? I, I don't know, my decorator's terrible. In his latest bit of self-aggrandizement, the narcissistic dog secretly uses Stewie's time machine as a ploy for hookups. When he tries to cover his tracks, he once again sabotages the present by causing time to move backward. Conceptually, it's an idea that big-time sci-fi masters like Christopher Nolan live for. But this is Family Guy we're talking about, so you can rest assured that we get to relive some of the show's most memorable moments in reverse. The stakes continue to ramp up as Stewie nears the reversal of his birth, but it's not enough to stop the show from taking its trademark ridiculousness to a fitting 11. I've got to say, I didn't think you were going to be able to pull it off, but you did it. You saved my life. Season 12, Christmas Guy. Family Guy isn't a show concerned with fan service. Do you know what I did last week? I time-traveled ahead to Christmas so I wouldn't have to wait all year for the new toys to come out. But considering this holiday special was the most viewed episode of season 12, suffice it to say the series had some making up to do after Brian's unexpected passing. Sure, the whole thing was a glorified rating stunt, but the fan-favorite dog's return definitely gives viewers a reason to believe in Christmas miracles. Stewie isn't the only character whose Christmas spirit is reawakened, however, as this episode also sees Carter Pewterschmidt being taught the true meaning of the holiday by his son-in-law, Peter. Though he ultimately does so under threat, watching the show's resident rich curmudgeon find the courage to bring back his town's Christmas carnival is just another joy in this world. You know what I want for Christmas? I want my friend back. Your friend? Yes, my best friend. Season 13. The Simpsons Guy. It's a crossover we never knew we needed, but one we're grateful to have nevertheless. Yay! A crossover always brings out the best in each show. It certainly doesn't smack of desperation. When one of Peter's ventures ends with the Griffins being chased out of Quahog, they stumble into Springfield, where they meet an assortment of strange-looking individuals. Oh, and don't drink the water. Everybody around here looks like they have hepatitis. Chief among them are a man named Homer and his eccentric family of five. Sheesh, something feels familiar about this. While the laughs are mostly engineered from McFarlane's brand of humor, this episode completely owns the obvious similarities shared between Family Guy and The Simpsons. It's just a lousy ripoff. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not a ripoff of Duff. It may have been inspired by Duff, but I, I like to think it goes in a different direction. It's a pleasure to see these two families interact, but it's made all the more hilarious once Peter and Homer's kinship turns to resentment, culminating in an epic showdown that's sure to satisfy fans of both shows. Season 14. A lot going on upstairs. For as many times as Peter and Lois have shown how much they love one another, their stubbornness can reach unbelievable heights. Welcome to the Pete Pad, where the dancing's hot, the drinks are hot, everything's just freaking hot. But you can be sure we'll have a reason to laugh at them and occasionally with them. One of their more trivial feuds arises when Peter turns the attic into a man cave and regularly terrorizes the house with his friends. What brought about this new living arrangement, you ask? Well, Stewie's struggling with nightmares. 
In yet another intriguing sci-fi premise that brings them together, Stewie enlists Brian to enter his mind and locate the source of his fears. On top of being visually enthralling, this episode provides even more affirmation that nothing compares to the love between a boy and his dog. You, you never have to worry about letting me down. I'll always be proud of you. In fact, I already am. Season 15. Chris has got a date. 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 When the middle Griffin sibling gets shot down for the homecoming dance, Stewie helps him record a viral video in which he asks Taylor Swift to be his date. To everyone's surprise, she says yes. But the great night the two have is derailed when Chris finds out she used him as inspiration for more songs about bad relationships. Cause I know you're just blubber in a dress shirt. While it's delightful to see Family Guy lampoon pop music, it's even more rewarding when Chris confronts Taylor and stands up for himself. He may not be the most disliked member of the family, sorry Meg, but Chris doesn't always get his due in the spotlight. When he does, however, it only amplifies the valuable lessons he learns about life and himself. Wow, Chris, that was really nice of you. Yeah, I guess. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of girls for you. No one will ever be close to as good as her, but we'll find you someone. Season 16, Emmy-winning episode. Despite its consistent popularity among critics, Family Guy's success hasn't exactly lent itself to awards consideration. Family Guy has been around since 1999, and whenever it's time for the Emmys, they don't give us one. I'm sick of it. Well, I'm not making another episode with The Simpsons. It's a fact the writers are acutely aware of, as evidenced by the season 16 opener, in which the Griffins parody several hit TV series from the last 20 years in order to win an Emmy. And they pull out all the stops. Peter impersonates the likes of Walter White and Tony Soprano, while cameos from Sofia Vergara, Tina Fey, and Aaron Sorkin, among others, only add to the utter outlandishness. While the Emmy board is unimpressed by their efforts, it's a surprisingly thoughtful tribute to television and the uniqueness of adult animation. The icing on top is that not even this episode received an Emmy nomination. And worst of all, you take this big pile of garbage and you tie it all up by having everyone sit around saying, at least everything's back to normal, as if something happened. When nothing happened, it was a complete waste of everyone's time. Season 17, Big Trouble in Little Quahog. Aside from their irresistible chemistry, it's episodes like this that truly beg the question as to why Brian and Stewie don't have a spin-off series of their own. If you're free, I'd love to hear about any new writing projects you're working on. At least wait for me to send it. Their one-of-a-kind escapades always gives us a fresh perspective on the world around them, and that's especially true once they're shrunk down to microscopic size. Teaming up with a group of water bears led by Kyrie Irving's Vernon, the two are forced to put aside their squabble that led to their shrinking in order to outrun a hungry pack of dust mites. Oh my god, it's the dust mites! Oh no! Stewie's bedroom has its fair share of surprises, of course, but we could never have guessed how much adventure could be found between the fibers of the carpet. Season 18, Peter and Lois's Wedding While the Quagmires gave us a glimpse of the early days of Peter and Lois's relationship, not much was made of their trip to the altar until deep into Family Guy's run. Well, it was the 1990s, the decade of Viagra, but also Lorena Bobbitt. When the power goes out at the Griffin household, Peter and Lois regale their family with the story of their wedding. And seeing as how it was the 90s, they cannot resist fudging a few details for the sake of parroting the decade and all of its trends. Friends, the birth of search engines, and the reality TV boom are all thrown into the line of fire. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. For a time gone by, it feels as timeless as Peter and Lois's love. Aww. If I didn't come here, I'd regret it for the rest of my life. I know I screwed up and I don't deserve you, but I can't stop thinking about you day and night. Season 19, Paterminator. On top of being an ingenious homage to James Cameron's Terminator franchise, Paterminator demonstrates that Family Guy still has fresh ideas after more than 20 years on television. Well, it took six hours to sweep up this pile of trash, but at least nothing can windily ruin it. Brian and Stewie's friendship is put to the ultimate test after their future selves sends robots resembling their family back in time to kill them. Unlike the deadly serious stakes of Cameron's films, however, the episode finds numerous ways to mock the two for how much trouble their petty behavior can cause. 
Not only that, but it also puts a clever spin on some of the show's most popular gags while getting in a hilarious dig at a certain other animated show. That's not your normal time pad. Where'd you get that? I borrowed it from Rick and Morty. They've borrowed plenty from us. As far as rewatchable episodes go, we'll be back to this one in no time. We've got to show them that our friendship is unbreakable, that we love each other. Brian, we have to kiss. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Season 20 The Fat Man Always Rings Twice The show's later seasons are at their best when leaning hard into parody, and few episodes embrace their trappings quite like this one. Please, have a seat. Do you mind if I don't smoke? I'm afraid I do. Totally understand. The film noir genre is torn a new one as this black and white episode finds Peter as a Prohibition era private eye trying to solve a murder case. Like some of the show's best send ups, it doesn't hesitate to satirize the more dated aspects of the classic detective story, but it also wears its love for the genre on its finely animated sleeve as well. The self-aware historical humor will make you cringe in all the best ways, while the mystery will leave you guessing right until the final reveal. It's Marion Lynn Flowers, which is a very typical man's name for this time period. Like Carol. It's everything that makes us glad Family Guy has no end in sight. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.